Sherman Act, um, Sherman Antitrust Act of 1899. I used to put this in all of my affidavits, like I was writing the name, you know, um, the Sherman Act and the Clayton Act. I highly recommend you guys go and research that. Do not take my word for it. Um, this falls into when I talk about the things that Donald Trump is doing regarding deportation and immigration, the antitrust laws apply. Now, the Sherman Act of 1890, to read the whole act, I'd recommend um, going to the actual law itself. I always like to go visit the United States Federal Trade Commission because they have a lot of this information there, but it's 27 stat 20915 USC. Um, 1-7 is the United States antitrust law passed by the Congress under the presidency of Benjamin Harrison, which regulates competition among enterprises. The Sherman Act broadly prohibits, one, number one, anti-competitive agreements, and number two, unilateral conduct that monopolizes or attempts to monopolize a relevant market. The act authorizes the Department of Justice to bring suit to enjoin, i.e. in parentheses, prohibit conduct violating the act and additionally authorizes private parties injured. We are the private parties injured by conduct violating the act. We were subject to a monopoly game. The monopoly game is pooling, taking the names that our parents gave us, our mothers and fathers gave us, first putting us into the wardship status without our knowledge, our parents' knowledge also putting us into the orphan status when we were, they registered the birth certificates in Delaware, right? And claiming our mother's seeds and all of our seeds as heirs um, under the Saskatoon v. Trust Act and all these trusts and acts that are put in place now run by the International Monetary Fund, which were prior run by the United States Corporation. Um, anyways, so injured by conduct violating the act to bring suits for trouble damages. Now, in our case, our homes were subject to agents claiming to be us, claiming our estate via the name game monopoly. So each house, and then you all know the international authorities I'm speaking to now, when you send us the check for the damages, it's treble damages as stated here, which is i.e. three times as much money in damages as a violation costs them. Over time, the federal courts have developed a body of law under the Sherman Act, making certain types of anti-competitive conduct per se. Now, you always go into court prior to becoming a proper person as pro se litigant, per, per se illegal and subjecting other types of conduct to case-by-case -case analysis regarding whether the conduct unreasonably restrains trade. Now, because we're in a commercial mercenary war and it's all about trade, which I look at it from a food perspective in seeds. So in essence, when you travel, I'm noticing that Italy and Israel and all these places that are European owned or occupied, they're not owned, but occupied, have access to grapes and apples and pretty much everything that we have here in the so-called um, European occupied colonial state, um, Jamaica and the Caribbean. So you find mangoes and you find pineapples and you find bananas and local stuff here. And then you find imported apples and grapes that are, have pesticides and all kinds of um, chemicals on them, which is unedible and is actually quite harmful to the humans, which is against the rights of, um, uh, it's against the human rights, it's a human rights violation. Anyways, over time, the federal courts have developed a body of law under the Sherman Act, making certain types of anti-competitive conduct per se illegal and subjecting other types of conduct by case to case by case analysis regarding whether the conduct unreasonably restrains trade the law attempts to prevent the artificial raising of prices by restriction of trade or supply. Innocent monopoly or monopoly achieved by solely achieved solely by merit is perfectly perfectly legal, but acts of by a monopolist um, to artificially preserve that that status, the wardship status. So you have a group, a body, under Her Majesty the Queen and Right of Ontario, care of the Minister of Consumer Services 
go look it up, don't take my word for it, who have listed you, branded you as black, Negro colored, or under worship status, meaning that you're mentally incompetent to stand. So you're civilly to be more choose when you go into the court system. The court systems are um, working against us because they're fraud. They're set up by European colonists run by the Jesuit Popes of Rome, Deputy Knights Templars as Democratic Party members who are actually doing auctioneering. They're auctioneering you off when you go in there. Anyways, it just goes on to say that, um, but acts of monopolist by artificially preserve the status of nefarious dealings to create a monopoly are not. The purpose of the Sherman Act is not to protect competitors from harm from le legitimately successful businesses, nor to prevent businesses from gaining honest profits from consumers, but rather to preserve a competitive marketplace to protect consumers from abuses. Now, this act needs to be um, all international authorities. Here's the problem. When we go to shop and we're being subjected to 1,700 notes, whether it's JA notes or what have you here, for less than a handful of black rice, that's extortion, right? Especially if it comes from Pakistan, Pakistan notes are less than what they, the notes are worth here, the value of the JA notes here. So that simply means it's extortion beyond extortion. And a, a handful, a less than a handful of rice cannot feed one's family if you have three or four or whatever children you have. So um, in addition to the Himalayan salt I was talking about for 700 notes for an eight ounce container, which is $2 and something online, um, US. So if you're 700, you're looking at, you know, a huge extortion fee. Now, what has to happen is the international authorities have to go and crack down on the extortion that's going on globally on the airs. Um, and these corrupt European corporations who have stolen the lands and have access to, even though they're under the European euro, which is also struggling because they apparently stole, um, used our trust which was created by Noble Jarelli. You can research that, the Express Trust of Moors. You'll have that information. You have the, the actual proper um, numbers for that Express Trust. So the um, Global World Trust is using that without our authorization and giving all kinds of grants and loans to all these different so-called countries, corrupt court organizations to do God knows what. With. So anyways, it's imploding on them and they're having to pay exorbitant prices. If you watch what they pay for stuff in Switzerland and Italy and all these places, it's huge in comparison to other places for the same things. Now, we're also being subjected to extortion here as well for remedial things that, and also substandard, substandard food. If you look at what we get in the grocery stores here versus, and we're talking in smaller towns, not in Montego Bay and not in Kingston. You can go to Constant Spring Roads and you can go to Fairview Plaza in Montego Bay and you're going to get really good stuff up in the um, elite areas. However, in the lower socioeconomic areas, you'll notice a significant difference. Per, um, case in point, we bought popcorn at DNY a couple times well. And I was talking about it yesterday. We went to do the popcorn on the stove like we always do as our little treat, whatever. And sure enough, twice in a row, um, the popcorn isn't even poppable. It doesn't, it nothing, doesn't go anywhere. So DNY, you have to give me back those 200 some odd notes. Anyways, all I'm saying is stop sending crap food down here that you send in the homeless shelters. Um, we know the difference. We, we researched this stuff for years and we can see that what's going on is extortion. They have beans and things here that you'd probably put as garbage um, in other places. Now, some of this stuff is good. You've got Grace Foods and other um, corporations that are okay, but some of it's really, when you look at it and you see they're charging three, 400 or 200 for a can of beans that's 50 cents or 25 cents elsewhere and sometimes free. Subscribe, share this video, and go and research the Sherman Act on the United States Federal Trade Commission and look up the actual act itself. It's listed here, 15 U.S.C. 26 stat which um, outlines the role of, um, and it, it talks about all the monopolies here, the restraint of trade, securities, anti and you have to serve your stuff to the Securities and Exchange Commission. I'll go into that in another video.